So in this video, we'll walk through setting up Ubuntu on Windows 11. Now, the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have a late enough version of Windows 11 installed. And you can do that by searching for about your PC. And if you scroll down, you'll see an OS build, and that has to be higher than 22,000. So it looks like I'm good. So I can start installing Ubuntu. Now, you wanna make sure that you have the virtualization service installed. So to do that, we're going to search for Windows features. We'll click on turn Windows features on or off. And the one we're looking for is the virtual machine platform. And we wanna make sure that's checked. Click OK, and that turns it on. And it'll take a few minutes for that to get installed. And it's gonna require a reboot. So I'll restart. So now my computer has restarted and it updated while it restarted. So I definitely have the latest version now, so I should be good to go. So now we're gonna to go to the Windows Store. And here we're gonna search for the Windows subsystem. And here we want the Windows subsystem for Linux preview. So this is the first thing we have to install. Once we just do this, we will still need to install a distribution, but for now we need to get this installed. It'll take a few moments. And I'll open it up and it looks like we're good. That didn't do much, but it gets us ready to install our distribution of choice, which in this case will be Ubuntu, and we'll install that. So now it's installing Ubuntu, and you can see we have our Ubuntu window that's opened. Then you're gonna to wanna to give it a Windows username. So your Unix username doesn't have to match your Windows username. So I would suggest that you pick one that's short and doesn't have any spaces in it. And give it a password. And we're all good. Now, once you're logged in, you're gonna see that there's a bunch of updates you'll need to do. So we're gonna say sudo update. It's gonna want the password. This is the password that I just entered and it will start the installation of any updates that it needs. So now we'll do sudo apt full dash upgrade. This will install all the updates that it just pulled in. And usually this can take a while, so just be patient. And it looks like that completed. Now I'm going to be using this to compile C and C++ code. So let's check and see if we have GCC installed and it's not, but you'll notice command not found, but it can be installed with sudo apt install GCC. So if you're not familiar with Linux, sudo is essentially the equivalent of running as the administrator, but for Linux. So I want to install as the administrator because that requires access to some system level things. And once I do this, it'll check to make sure that I want to do it. I do. So then now we're going to install GCC. So now if I type GCC and press enter, it'll say GCC fatal error, no input files. So that's good. This error is coming from GCC. That means it's installed. So I'm going to move this window to the side and my code is located here. I have this C file, which is empty since I didn't save it last time. I'll use that. You could save a new file in your editor if you want, or you can open it with whatever app you want. So I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. So there's nothing there. So let me just type a real quick Hello World program. So now that's done, I need to compile that code in Ubuntu. Now this file is located in my Documents folder. So I'm going to need to change to that directory. So the command is CD, and Linux uses forward slashes. So I'm going to say forward slash MNT slash C to get to the root of my C drive. Now, if I do an LS there, I can see all the stuff that's installed. So this is a new computer, so there's not much there yet. But if I go to users, then my username, and if I do a double tab, it'll give me a list of what's there. And I believe this is under documents, programming. And if I do an LS, that shows me what files are there. But if I do an LS-L, it'll give me some more information. And so I can see that this was the file that I just saved. So I can compile it with GCC. I'm going to use the C11 standard, all warnings, and then I'll say bsc.c. And that completed successfully. And then if I do an ls-l, 
you can see there's a new file called a.out. That's the executable that was generated. And to run it, I do dot slash to say run from this directory a.out. And you can see it says hello world. So now I'm ready to compile whatever C program I write. So it looks like I'm all set and ready to go.